Hello, my name is Mandolin Royal, and today I don't have to weigh any birds. <laughs> Instead, I've got to unload all of this and get it safe and sound into the barn. This is the grower for the American Breastfeed Trial, manufactured by Kraut Creek up in Greenville, Ohio. And I also doubled my order for their 17% layer feed. It's not the breast recipe, it's just their house blend. And I have notes on that coming up in a second. Since I don't have to weigh anyone, I'm gonna take some time to dive more into feed, feed quality, what things mean, and what you should be looking for. So hold tight while I go ahead and unload this. It won't take me too long, but I'm procrastinating. <laughs> more on this in a second. So this is the feed that I've been feeding because it is one of the better ones in our area as far as layer feed goes. And I have been top dressing it with the Fertrell Breeder Supplement to try to make it a little bit better. But now that I have a much better source of feed, I can get away from this stuff. And I went ahead and I asked Jeff over at Fertrell what his top three least favorite feed ingredients are. Now, he told me it's wheat middlings, because it's a filler, dried distiller's grains, because there's a much higher risk of mycotoxins, and that can be very problematic. So when I'm looking at this label, guess what? There it is. Exactly what he doesn't want to see. And the very next one, another thing he doesn't want to see. So that lets me know that he would not approve of this one. Now, when I'm over here looking at the crude analysis, 17% protein, so that's the same protein as what I'm getting from Kraut Creek. The lysine and methionine is different. I'm not sure what else is different, but here is the Kraut Creek tag for their just regular old 17% layer. Same protein. Higher on the lysine, higher on the methionine. But check out the ingredients. I don't see the no-nos. <laughs> and one of the reasons why I switched to try this is to get away from the BS ingredients that come out the back side as undigested because some of this stuff is poorly digestible. It's just running straight through them and adding to the weight, and I'm paying for that. Do I need to pay for that? Pretty sure I don't. So my next step here with the layer feed is to measure how much my adults are getting because I did notice a significant drop and I want to assign a value to that drop in consumption in this feed. My birds were happy and content. They showed that to me in temperament they just kind of were chill and not acting like they were starving to death which is a really nice thing to see because i do want them to be happy healthy and productive so i'm gonna keep doing this i don't know that i'm too worried about doing a comparison but i do have enough of the other feed to Go ahead and do that, and I might split my adult pens half and half, but I will not be supplementing the Fertrell supplement if I do do that because that would be a little bit disingenuous by amping the nutrition through a supplement, which it's hatch season, so I have to think about that a little bit. So maybe just one pen on the old feed and the others on the good stuff. This is way better all right i'm done procrastinating i'm gonna unload and then i'm gonna show you the tags from the starter and the grower to see what changes as we go through these next several weeks of the grow cycle so back to work more in a second i'm halfway through <laughs> stop to take a little breather and it's annoying because I know gosh dang well how to drive a forklift, but I don't have one. <laughs> Hand unstacking it is. 
Now, also, if you've already been exposed to the data and you've already been exposed to the nutritional education, I might be preaching to the choir. But if you're still using the bulk manufactured crumbles that have those filler ingredients in them, know that you're probably doing yourself and your flock a disservice. All right, back to work. All right, so here's the tag for the starter and the grower, and I got a little creative on how to present these tags and film it without wobbling. <laughs> You're welcome. So I was talking to Jeff about why there was a drop in the protein, the lysine, the methionine. Oh, let's see what else. Fats the same, fiber dips a little bit, and calcium dips a little bit. So he explained it as because there's so little when they hatch and through those next four weeks, you have to amp up what they're getting to give them the absolute best possible start through nutrition and accommodate for their small little crops. Now, as they mature and as they grow, their crops get bigger and you're allowed to start reducing things and they're still going to see benefit from quality nutrition. So we're going to see a dip from 23% protein to 19% protein for the grower. They're going to be on the starter for a full six weeks. Well, more like five weeks because I have a plan here. So my plan, because I still have a couple of bags of the starter left, I'm going to mix it half and half so that it's not a sudden drop. I'm still going to measure it for the sake of scientific study. And then they're going to be on the grower full time by the time they are six weeks old. So the chicks from Recreational Homestead, they have another week of the starter. Then they have a week of a half and half, and then they're going to be purely on this grower. Now, the ingredient list, it still reads like perfection. There's no fillers. There's no garbage. There's no BS in here, which makes me really happy because that means I'm not paying for empty nutrition to fall out of their backside for me to pick up later because that's essentially what's happening. When you feed fillers and you feed stuff that they can't even digest that well, it's going to come out into your pitchfork, not as meat on that bird. Just keep that in mind. So when you look at cost and you look at the feed expense itself, you need to think a little further out and what it's going to do for your birds, what it's going to do for your results, and how that will cumulatively affect your flock performance and that's why i'm diving deeper into this stuff because as it turns out it matters <laughs> so on the tag here it does say four to eight weeks but we're straying a little bit for the american breast after eight weeks, I'm probably going to do another week or two of the grower, and then we're going to transition over to the finishing feed. The finishing feed, I have a lot more questions for Jeff, so I hope he's ready. But that's going to get us into our freezer age birds, and then we're going to have our processing results from the birds we know we don't need to retain longer for breeding. Because the entire point of this grow is to show what their actual consumption is, what that feed conversion rate is, what that cost is, what the yield is, but also how many birds do we find that are worth keeping? Because I'm a big proponent of the 10% retention rule. And that means for every 10 chicks, I'm really hoping to find one that is absolute stellar breeding quality because after all my time doing this, I already know there's some birds they're not worth hatching from. So that'll be in some more little breakdown videos like this where I get more into the nitty gritty 
and what we're doing, why we're doing it, and why it matters. So I was super thankful to know that these adjustments to the levels is simply because the bird can take in more and because the bird can take in more that creates an allowance because there is a significant price difference between a starter feed and a grower feed and that's because of how things change through the recipe because protein is expensive amino acids also expensive so if their growth determines that you can get some leeway in their ability to uptake what they're getting that's going to transfer into savings and i know at least myself i'm not trying to spend any more than i have to but i am going to spend what it takes to do things right gosh these are pretty ingredient lists I feel like I could eat this because <laughs> I learned a while back I got to take care of myself too and what's really fascinating in this feed trial is seeing the difference that nutrition can make because it's sort of confirming what I thought I already knew and then I'm also learning new things as we go through this so feel free to like and subscribe as we keep on going and I'm going to fill you in on as much as I can with expert support as I need it to answer questions that I didn't even know I had. <laughs> if you have a question, please throw it in the comments. I'll take a look. I'll send it on. We're going to find ourselves with better flocks in the long run. So more on this later. <laughs>